sliceofsci-fi.com. Ooh, I love it when I'm nasty. Villains. They're essential for every hero to have, and that's just a little bit of common sense. A hero needs an adversary, someone to challenge them, to give them a purpose. Without them, a hero has nothing. See, back in the day, villains were usually just someone who would come out and say they were evil. That's it. So now they'll use their weird gimmick and do evil things. And that was fine then. Villains like Kite Man could torment the general public all they wanted to by throwing kites at them. Because, yeah, that was a thing. Or the Hypno Hustler could challenge Spider-Man with the evil power of Disco. Why? Because why not? The villain wasn't the main focus, the hero was. Today though, things have changed, and actually a lot. There's focus on who these villains are now, and why they do what they do. The excuse of just being evil doesn't cut it anymore. Today's readers or viewers want to connect on some level with these characters. The more you connect, the greater interest you have in the story. If the villain is weak, then the hero can tend to look like a bully. The man in the black top hat twirling the mustache and tying the maiden to a railroad track doesn't really connect with the reader, at least I've never done anything like that. But someone who has felt alone, sadness, loss, and lashed out at the world? That's a more relatable character. So now villains tend to share the spotlight with their hero counterparts. But one hero of the superhero pantheon has the greatest set of villains, and that's none other than Batman. Now, I know, I know, everything about Batman has been done to death. He's like DC's star child, they love to showcase everywhere. He's more popular than Superman, and Superman's an actual star child. There have been countless animated TV shows and movies coming out every couple of years, and a steady line of comics getting printed ever since the 1940s. But there's a reason for all of that, and it's because Batman's rogues gallery provides this constant pool of inspiration. I mean, not only has DC planned out another Batman franchise in the future with Ben Affleck taking over the role, but they're creating a brand new TV show titled Gotham that is in production right now. The show is about Jim Gordon years before Batman first appears and how he got his start as a Gotham City police officer. It also features the early rise of some of Gotham's most famous bad guys. So now there's going to be a show with Batman's villains without Batman even being in it. That's how popular these characters are and how much of an outcry there is from fans who want to see different incarnations of these characters. And it's not because they're the evilest or the coolest looking. No, it's actually a lot deeper than that. See, each of Batman's villains shares a trait with Batman himself. Almost as though each villain is a twisted version of what Bruce Wayne could have turned into after his parents had died. If he had channeled his rage and emotions negatively like his villains did at the crucial turning points of their lives. And such is the case with, say, his villain, the Scarecrow, who is probably the most similar to Batman in the case that they both use fear as their main weapon. Whereas Batman uses fear to terrorize the criminals of Gotham, Scarecrow uses fears for his own personal gain and amusement. Then there's Two-Face, who deals with identity issues. See, when District Attorney Harvey Dent got scarred across the left side of his face, he not only lost his sanity, but also his ability to make decisions without flipping a coin. He can't control his two identities the way Bruce can be both Batman and Bruce Wayne. Catwoman is the wild side of what Batman could be. Selina Kyle is all about the thrill-seeking aspect of dressing up at night, climbing over rooftops, but she's only interested in what's good for herself, and isn't above committing some crimes every once in a while just for the thrill of it. The Riddler is all about creating mystery, very similar to how Batman operates in the shadows. He's the intelligent equivalent of Bruce and is obsessed with trying to outsmart Batman no matter what the cost is. And if the Riddler is the intellectual equivalent, then the Penguin is Batman's financial equivalent. See, Oswald Kalapot is the bad side of wealth, which Bruce Wayne could easily have fallen into. The Penguin is shrewd and ruthless and thrives off the corruption of Gotham City. Ra's al Ghul is one of Batman's most interesting adversaries because of how similar their goals are. They're both men looking to fix the wrongs in the world and make it a better place. What separates them is their means of going about this. While Batman's one rule is to never kill, Ra's has absolutely no problem killing as a means to cleanse the world. In fact, he's willing to kill most of the population in order to do so. I mean, you can go down the list of all of Batman's villains and find themes that link them together. Harley Quinn and the Mad Hatter are both products of obsession, driving each of them to insanity in a life of crime. Whereas Harley Quinn is obsessed with the Joker, the Mad Hatter lives by his obsession with stories of Lewis Carroll. 
Killer Croc and Man Bat represent the animal inside that can take over, the blind rage that is caged up and released, rage that Bruce is able to keep inside and under control. Clayface is all about being able to change your appearance and not losing control of who you are. Mr. Freeze shows us the hurt and the evil that can come out of someone who loses their loved ones. Now it's pretty obvious by now that I haven't mentioned the Joker. And you're right, because I was saving him for last. The Joker is like all of these villains combined into one smiling, terrifying force of nature. He's the absolute worst case scenario of what could have happened to Bruce Wayne if he had lost his sanity the night his parents had died. The Joker is chaos and madness and fear and loss and rage and obsession and corruptibility and unpredictability and death and destruction. He and Batman are two sides of the same coin. Which raises the question, is Bruce Wayne insane? And to me, the answer is yes. Yes, he most certainly is. He did lose his sanity over his parents' death. I mean, the man dresses up as a bat and beats people up. He may be a superhero, but he's clearly not doing things the normal way. But the thing is, unlike his villains, he's channeling his insanity for good. All his villains took their sanity and basically said, screw the world and everyone in it. Bruce was able to fight that urge and instead say, I can save the world and everyone in it. And maybe that's why Batman's villains have to be crafted so well. Because the hero is essentially a crazy person. He could snap at any minute and become a bad guy himself. So his villains must be shadows and temptations of what he could be. So if you're curious, that's why there's always new adaptations of these characters coming out. Yes, it's because Batman and his villains are incredibly bankable, but there are also many writers and artists who find these characters so interesting and know that the story possibilities are endless when you're dealing with such a well-crafted subject matter. And it's because Batman has the best villains. For Slice News, I'm Joe Maloney.